Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new episode of our F123 driver career mode here on the channel. Hope you're all having a great day. Today we are headed to Britain here for Silverstone for the British Grand Prix. Fresh off of a points finish again for the first time uh, since, what, uh, the United States Grand Prix in Miami there in Austria. We had a sprint race and uh, things kind of went back and forth. We had some safety cars come into the mix and a little bit of safety car controversy as well uh, with Lance Stroll getting stuck on circuit and his time uh, at Aston Martin is, is coming to a close if he doesn't clean things up. You saw uh, the report in the last episode at the beginning that uh, Lauren Stroll has confirmed he's not afraid to replace his son in the car uh, if he cannot pick up his performance. So uh, we're going to have to wait and see what happens there. I haven't been completely, you know, contacted yet, uh, but I was hearing some rumblings uh, that something could actually be on the horizon there as there was confirmed potential interest in me uh, to go to Aston Martin as well. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. We're still trying to prove ourselves as a rookie here in Formula 1. So delighted that I'm even on a radar uh, of Lawrence Stroll, to be honest. Now, as we kick off the race strategy program here, free practice, one a nice overcast day here. The weekend is supposed to be uh, dry for the most part. Now, it does say that there is potential for rain in the green. Grand Prix towards the end of the Grand Prix. Similar for qualifying. Potential for rain towards the end of qualifying, but we already know we're probably not going to make it to Q3, so not a huge concern there. Uh, but nonetheless, here, getting uh, pretty comfortable with the car. Uh, I was I was pretty under theory as well, actually, with the setup that I had here. Uh, but overall, I was able to, you know, handle it pretty well. Uh, we end up here P5 in practice as usual. Uh, take the practice position uh, with a grain of salt because we got Sunoda down there, Piastri in the bottom two spots on the grid now. Time for qualifying. Our expectations may be making Q2 uh, with myself and Yuki, but uh, have you, as you guys seen, if you've watched the last handful of episodes, it's still going to be difficult now as we still... Uh, uh, strive to make upgrades, but right now uh, kind of waiting on some major upgrades to come in here uh, But nonetheless getting Q1 underway as we head through these first couple of corners actually getting a, a piece of the grass there on the left side Tires now, but we continue on Hamilton went to the top of the board very early on in the session now But only a few cars of course had set a lamp at this point here now as we go through uh, the sweeping right-hander there And didn't quite hit my apex the way I was hoping but as we head down towards uh, the final little chicane here getting a decent run Really dealing with understeer mostly right here. That's where it really felt kicking in in the car the most But we cross the line and it's p4 ahead of Gasly and surprisingly ahead of Fernando Alonso uh, Look at this Sonoda down there to p11. We were quickly falling a little bit down to p7 uh, But Verstappen and Alonso both set pretty slow laps So we were p9 as we got another fast lap underway at the end of the session I feel like we were looking pretty good at this point uh, But obviously setting a, another lap to be safe only about a tenth of a second of improvement. Sonoda gets held up on a slow lap by Bontas, and we are as well. He's stomped right on the apex. What are you doing, Valtteri? Who's going to completely ruin my lap? We don't have enough time to get back around to start another lap. So that's it. Our qualifying is over, and we might get eliminated as cars were going faster. We were dropping down the order significantly, and we would end up missing Q2 because of Valtteri Bontas. It's P17, and Sonoda ends up dead last. Absolutely unacceptable right there by the Alfa Romeo, and unfortunately, nothing will be done about it. But before the Grand Prix kicks off, we actually had a call from Lawrence Stroll. Hey Gary, thanks for answering my call. I'm not here to recruit you yet, but I want to touch basis with you. Have you signed anything for next year? Hey, uh, yeah, thanks for calling, Lawrence. I, I've got nothing so far for next season. Okay. It's no secret my son is struggling a lot. And I know you realize you probably won't end up at Red Bull next year with how good Perez has been. You've put up great efforts so far. Let's keep in touch over the summer break. Well, there we have it. So a quick chat with Lauren Stroll wants to keep in touch over the summer break, which is just around the corner. Uh, so interesting to say the least. But yeah, let's focus in on Sunday and head to the starting grid. Welcome to not only the home of British motorsport, but also the birthplace of the Formula One World Championship. It's race day here at Silverstone, a classic on the calendar, and it's time for the British Grand Prix. Straddling the border of Northamptonshire and Buckinghamshire, the 18 corners of Silverstone Circuit form the 3.6 mile beating heart of Formula One. It's been reinvented over the years, with Turn 1 now the fast right-hander of Abbey, but the magic of racing is as strong here as it's ever been. 
it's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. An immense lap from Carlos Sainz yesterday puts him in pole position, and it's Charles Leclerc in P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Verstappen, Russell, Perez, Stroll, Gasly, Bottas, Albon, Hulkenberg, Oscar Piastri, Norris, Ocon, Magnussen, Sargent, Golden Boy, Fernando Alonso, Joe, and Yuki Tsunoda. Now it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. It's race day yet again, and joining me for a chat is Anthony Davidson. And our racers are certainly in for a rough day today. What will you be watching out for as they head into turn one? Well, the start of the race is always one of the most nerve-wracking parts. You have to hope that everyone is able to get off to a clean start, and this is possibly the trickiest part of the entire race. So many drivers in such a small space, and finding your breaking point into turn one as well. It's a testament to the driver's skill that there aren't more incidents. All right, then it's time to go racing here in Britain. P17 on the grid after our lap impeded by Bottas. A lot of drivers on mediums, but quite a few as well on softs. We're doing the medium uh, to hard tire strategy while our team at Sonoda does soft to hard. Let's go racing. Here we go then. The formation lap gets underway and the excitement here is building as we near ever closer to the start of the race. Which team will come out on top? Who's got their strategies right for today's race? Well, we'll soon find out. We're almost ready to start the race as the cars take their positions on the grid, with the drivers and teams making their final preparations. All right, lad. This is a home Grand Prix for myself. Make sure to wave to my family who's in the grandstand you're just passing by now. Shout out to Mark and his family. Let's have a good one, Mark. I'll try to make this a great Grand Prix for you. All right, it's time. We're ready to roll here in Silverstone. Such a fun circuit. I never really enjoyed driving here until uh, about F1 22. Uh, so only about a game uh, that I've really enjoyed this circuit, to be honest now. Uh, but we are ready to roll. Our teammate of Yuki Sonoda from the back of the grid. He had great pace last episode in Austria. Had some wing damage that put him behind. He was probably going to beat us. It's going to be, though, lights out now. And we are underway from the British Grand Prix. A terrible start from Magnussen. I'm going to get around him already. Three wide briefly with him and Sargent towards turn one, though. The two Ferraris, Leclerc, signs wheel to wheel. We see the usual absolute dominance in qualifying from Ferrari. I just want to make it to Q3 for one so I can witness this, uh, but you can see they're going to continue side by side. Hamilton uh, right there in the background going at it as well, and look at this. Sainz comes out on top at the same track, of course, that he picked up his first career win in uh, Formula 1 in real life, of course, in the 2022 season. Hamilton may be sizing up a move, and actually Leclerc logs up into the corner, so he drops a few positions right off the bat. There's Lance Stroll. Stroll finally had a Q3 effort, and now here he is putting the pressure on the back of Perez as we have to wait and see what he is capable of doing and a great chance for him to beat his teammate today as Alonso as well wasn't able to do anything in qualifying it was a terrible qualifying effort for the Spaniard uh, so a Stroll with a great chance to beat his teammate I go wide right there out of comps and that's unfortunate because that gives the opportunity uh, to one of my rivals right here Logan Sargent is, uh, just cruise right through there on the right side now as we're going to follow him behind him now sizing him up for a move and the same straight away here down towards the right hander and here we go wheel to wheel into the corner and not quite able to make the uh, actual move happen but hold on we have another one we're gonna go to the left side and actually he turns into us right there on the entrance of the corner now as we continue on and I was wondering what the heck that was about sergeant look at this I don't know what he was doing uh, he just kind of turned into me so uh, it wasn't big it wasn't major so we continue on uh, harmless but of course our arrival of sergeant of course doing things that we expect to see at this point already lap two a pass with a lead Hamilton of course moved up to second after Leclerc's lockup and now he passes Carlos Sainz that is going to be such a passing area all Grand Prix long. We had settled in to P15 after the opening moments of this Grand Prix and we're closing in on the back of Lando Norris uh, as well as Alex Albon, Esteban Ocon as they were having a heck of a scrap briefly but as we focus in on that we come right back to another pass 
for the lead. Carlos Sainz, the Spaniard around the British driver, the home Grand Prix, of course, for Hamilton and Russell, who are second and third. Mercedes making big gains here in this career mode. Now, as I go wide through the right-hander, that opened the door for Fernando Alonso, who I hadn't even had realized at the moment had moved past uh, Logan Sargent and had gotten to the back of me. Uh, so he moves through into 15th place. Alonso uh, really looking strong right now as he continues on. Uh, as you can see, the battles continue up front. There we go. Now, the Mercedes are going to swarm just like Austria. They swarmed a Ferrari and took them three wide. Well, they do it again. Russell on those softs while Hamilton's on the mediums. I think we're going to probably see Russell take the lead right here if he can hang on uh, alongside Hamilton, which he does into the chicane. He's going to go around the outside and he's going to be able to clear Hamilton. So through goes Russell into the lead. Two home Grand Prix drivers at the top of the board. One, two, but the battles continue. Hamilton left five. Now he's going to go back around uh, into the lead of this Grand Prix. Absolutely fantastic to watch this uh, stuff happening right here now uh, as Hamilton is actually, oh, he's pulling over. The engine has failed and he's going to be out of the Grand Prix. So just as it was looking great for Lewis, it comes to an end. Uh, free position for myself, so we'll take it. Uh, every position is so important right now as uh, we would focus in on the Bank of Esteban Ocon. I want to knock on wood. But I don't think I've ever gone this long to start an F1 career mode without an engine failure. Uh, and I, I don't know how we've gotten this lucky. I have them on. I have them to the maximum setting. So I was very shocked to come into this British Grand Prix. And we have yet to have any sort of mechanical engine failure in F123. I've seen Tom 97 series. I've watched every episode. And I've seen he's had like three of them already. So I was a bit surprised. Now getting the elbows out on the uh, the Alpine of Esteban Ocon. A little bit of contact just to belt. But we keep it clean there. And now we will make the pass on him. Uh, as it seems like those softs may be starting to fade a little bit now. And my medium starting to kind of come into the mix now. Uh, as you can see, Perez making a move on Max Verstappen. This may be, I think, the third time or so this season that we've just kind of seen Verstappen. Happen, struggling for pace. L uh, Lance Stroll just behind in P6. And we just got the call before the Grand Prix from Lawrence as they continue side by side through comps. But we got the call from Lawrence about Lance struggling. And the first Grand Prix after that call, here he is having a pretty superb run. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. We have also seen Lance Stroll three times this season been the car. We're going to have like a whole compilation before the season's over on that now as we continue on. Uh, you can see unfortunately losing a bit of contact to Hulkenberg and now uh, Esteban Ocon uh, with the DRS is actually going to be able to overtake me. So maybe those softs not falling off as hard as I thought. But you can see the battles continue up front. Alonso was scrapping it out with the Hulkenberg and that would actually bring them back towards myself uh, as well as Ocon. So we were right back into the mix with these guys here now as we settled in uh, to P15. Getting a warning for exceeding track limits right there. Of course you don't want to put all four wheels off and then I nearly do it again yellow flag as we've got cars pitting but something's going on and what in the world do we got going on there we got two McLarens one going into the pit lane one coming out but they were like swapping positions and it's Piastri and Norris of course but watch what happens so Norris is trying to pit Piastri's on his inside who's not trying to pit so they collide so Norris is going to come back in while Piastri is going to go back out. What in the world is that EA Codemasters? Come on now. Uh, as you can see, Norris would get it back rolling, but here he is. He doesn't care that his teammate's there, so the McLarens clash and just sabotage each other and probably took both of their chances of points uh, away. So, uh, very unfortunate there is... Oh my goodness, we make a heck of a save as our pit window opens here lap 13 of 17. Our teammate of Sonoda uh, as well had pitted at this point. A big thing is though, uh, we're probably going to be behind Sonoda and quite a few others because they had pitted uh, earlier and we at this time know how OP it is to pit earlier. We're going to have the pace later in the race, but will there be enough pace later in the race? That's the question. It's a decent pit stop here. Uh, had to wait for maybe a, about a second or so there for the Alpine, but we're going to get back rolling that's not Ocon, that's Pierre Gasly right in front of us right now. But you can see there goes Piastri. Lando Norris as well is going to be coming up into the mix. And here comes Kevin Magnussen, who is going to take advantage of me being on cold, hard tires. He's on the hards as well, uh, but he's going to get past me briefly. Zhou Guan Yu just behind. So we were second to last uh, after this had all started. Now look at this. Verstappen passes Russell. Russell seems to be struggling on the mediums. Perez goes through on the hards as well. And what was looking like a potential Mercedes 1-2 went to a Hamilton engine failure to now Russell down to fifth and maybe Lance Stroll going for the overtake as well. Here comes the Canadian up the inside down towards the sweeping right hand or up front. Uh, it was Sainz and Leclerc battling it out of course for the lead at this point but Stroll uh, up into fifth place. What a Grand Prix he is having. Unfortunately 
I forgot to do through the grid in this episode. I forgot to record the mid-race section part. I only went down to like 6th or 7th, uh, so I apologize for that. It will be back, though, in the next episode here as we go for a lunge up the inside of Magnuson. Couldn't quite complete it there, so P16 is where we maintain, but we are still right on the back of him. We're going to do the move that we did on Sergeant earlier. Dive it up the inside into the chicane. Here we go, wheel to wheel with Magnuson as we exit the corner. We're going to get ahead. He just really struggled on exit. He definitely had some understeer there, uh, so we move up into P15. We got good pace. We're trying to run down our teammate of Yuka Sonoda was kind of my goal before the end of the Grand Prix. He was on the mediums, uh, but he had pitted a little bit earlier than us, so we're going to have some pretty good pace here uh, later on in this Grand Prix compared to him. I say later on. We are later on. It's 18 of 26 laps. Here comes Magnuson now, trying to not abuse my battery too much. Of course, puts us in those vulnerable positions uh, to where we give up positions like that. Now, is look at the battle for the lead. Signs, Leclerc, Perez, Verstappen, and Lance Stroll are all here in the mix. Verstappen is going to go around the outside of Leclerc. Perez as well right there in fourth. And Stroll ready to take it all here today now as we continue on. Uh, uh, Aston Martin yet to be on the podium uh, this season. Although Fernando Alonso has been so good, so consistent. Just hasn't been uh, enough speed for a podium for them now. Here comes Verstappen now, lap 20, going for the move and to the lead he goes, as now you can see Perez, and look at this, Stroll's gotten past Leclerc with the DRS, and he might get past Perez as well, this would put him in the podium, couldn't quite complete it there, Perez stays ahead, as you see myself going for a move on Magnuson around the outside, now as you can see as well, Gasly, Piastri side by side, wheel to wheel, uh, as we come through, uh, up into now P15 once again, and we have a chance for what, 14th, 13th, 12th, 11th our teammate of Sonoda is at Carin 11th place here and the battles continue to the back of Pierre Gasly whose struggles with Alpine uh, seem to be continuing here now as we continue on this march through the grid so up into p14 we go nearly some contact there left him just barely enough room uh, a car width basically right there through the right hander now look at this the battles are still going on up front what in the world three wide for the lead it's Perez up the inside and stroll on the outside of Verstappen stroll into second Perez to the lead Verstappen and signs just got caught napping hard as it was almost like they were tandem drafting 2011 NASCAR style at Daytona or Talladega. We continue on ourselves with three laps to go, putting some pressure on the back of fellow rookie of Oscar Piastri, who's been kind of the best rookie over the last handful of races, but we're proven that's not going to be the case today. We lunge one up the inside of the Australian, and now we are wheel to wheel. This time we got the outside grip and power, and that should allow us to get clear, hopefully now barely clear, and we now take command of the position, and we can set our sights on our teammate of Yuki Sonoda and Valtteri Bontes. Hold on, here comes Piastri looking back up the inside side with Magnuson and he actually gets up my left side but banks out of it so P12 with Sonoda I don't know if we're going to be able to get Bontas he's kind of driving away at this point so it looks like the battle for P12 is what it's going to be with our teammate gotta say as we start this final lap great racing here in Britain today uh, as well uh, a, a somewhat calm race so at the same time but up front of course Perez made a three wide move for the lead where Lance Stroll nearly got the lead out of it all uh, but unfortunately for Lance maybe fortunately for me he did not take the lead but it is going to be Sergio Perez, who's going to be leading the way through these final couple of corners. A side-by-side -side battle in the background, but Verstappen's going to come out on top uh, of Carlos Sainz. But Perez is going to win in Britain and bring Lance Stroll onto the podium in second place with them. What a rebound for the Canadian, as now here we have an opportunity to pass our teammate of Sonoda. He's a sitting duck, has no DRS assistance. We breeze right past him, and on the final lap of the Grand Prix, we're going to be able to re-overtake him, of course, after falling behind after the pit stop. So P12, uh, a good effort again for Alpha Tori. P12 P13, honestly, uh, I would say that's about the best pace we could have had in this car as we come through the final corner. P12 in Silverstone, 13th place for my teammate of Yuki Sonoda. What a Grand Prix. Like I said, a calm Grand Prix, but great with the racing at the same time and a heck of a battle for the win. Uh, as now you're going to see driver of the day, rightfully so, Fernando Alonso. Let's head to the podium. A magnificent race and a drive right out of the top draw to take the win for Red Bull today. Tell me, Ant, how do they manage to achieve this win? You saw Perez there celebrating with his team. What a what a fun race that was uh, to drive. And what I believe the next one we're headed to Hungary. And then it's not the summer break after Hungary anymore. It's uh, we go to Belgium and then 
we get the summer break. Uh, so, yeah, we still got a couple races there. And I think that's when Chance with Lauren Stroll might kick off. But if Lance Stroll banks up uh, today with two more really good Grand Prix again, who knows uh, what the situation is going to be. Uh, we might be at Alpha Tori for a second season of this career mode. We could be going to Aston Martin. I've written off Red Bull already because, well, they have two drivers who are absolutely dominating. Verstappen and Perez, who has more wins than Max Verstappen right now. And, of course, Red Bull is not going to get rid of Max Verstappen. So uh, our chances of going to Red Bull are quite literally zero. It's not going to happen. So we already have to think about next season being really either Aston Martin, somewhere else, or still with Alfa Tori. I literally just basically said it could be anything. P11 in the standings, one point ahead of Oscar Piastri, our team at the Sonoda, P17 there. Perez, five points ahead of Verstappen, and 43 ahead of Leclerc as Red Bull is starting to stretch out that gap and make it a Perez versus Verstappen showdown in all uh, sides of the battle and the constructors as well. That's going to wrap it up for me. I'll see you guys in Hungary. Thank you for watching. Have a great day, everybody.